If you want to lose fat, you need to know this. When it comes to losing weight, there is a hierarchy of importance in terms of what you need to put your focus on. Now, most people think that they need to diet and exercise. And whilst that's true, I'm not denying that is definitely part of the process. There is a better focus that I believe will help you massively when you understand it. I'm going to split this video into kind of two parts. We're going to do this hierarchy of importance, if you will, when it comes to fat loss first. And then I'm going to take you upstairs to my office and I'm going to sit you down and show you with a money analogy how you can lose weight and how you're actually staying fat. So let's go with this first. Let's draw this in a pyramid in terms of importance. When it comes to fat loss, right, there's a few things to consider. The number one thing that is important above everything else is at the bottom, the foundation. And the foundation is a calorie deficit. Now, I know it's boring. I know you've heard it before, probably. I know you're like, ah, oh, calories, calories, calories. But you know what? We can't outdo science. This is the way that we lose weight and burn fat, is we be in a calorie deficit. So first off, you're not gonna lose fat if you're in a surplus. If you're eating too many calories for the amount you move, you're not gonna lose weight. So calorie deficit first, but there's other parts to this which are gonna play a massive role when it comes to not only losing weight, but keeping it off. The second thing that a lot of people don't pay enough attention to actually, is actually protein intake. Now this is, again, another debatable subject. Oh, high protein diets, acidic, you know, you should be eating more plant-based foods. Now, whilst I am actually a massive advocate for eating more fruits and vegetables, I think we are definitely deficient in minerals and vitamins, and we should be eating more fibrous foods in our diet. We should not be avoiding meat. We should not be demonizing meat. We should not be demonizing single ingredient foods, full stop. There are plenty of very unhealthy vegans out there. Sorry. Protein intake, increasing your protein levels. Now, what's this gonna do in terms of getting you healthier and getting you to actually lose weight. Now, this, we're talking about losing weight here in this video, getting rid of body fat. Now, protein is four calories per gram. It has a thermogenic effect on the body, meaning your body needs more calories to break protein down. It can fill you for longer, and you tend to, with protein, you're not able to consume like three chicken breasts, but you can consume a massive pizza and a bag of crisps and chocolate, can't you? Three chicken breasts would be about 500 calories maybe, but a 2,000 calorie Domino's pizza with a 600 calorie bag of M&Ms, gone. See what, where I'm going here? So protein intake is absolutely key when it comes to long-term fat loss and of course building and maintaining muscle or what some of you call toning up. Next one is a boring subject, but a one that we all probably know we need to do more of. Drink more water. What water is going to do is not only help your cells stay healthy and help you keep more hydrated in the body and in the mind. It's going to make you more focused. It's going to make you more full of energy. But the advantage of water when it comes to fat loss, which again is what this video is about, is that when you consume more liquid, you feel more full in the stomach. Hence, you usually tend to over consume less calories that are physical foods. So drinking a higher quantity of water can aid in suppressing your appetite more and have you feeling more full in a good way and help you flush out toxins from your body and just generally help you stay healthier and on track. Number fourth is where we add in exercise. You see, so it's obviously important, but it's not the absolute paramount thing. Now, excess, walking is exercise. Lifting weights is exercise. Um, doing sit-ups and press-ups and running is exercise, right? Anything that requires your body to move in a challenging way is exercise. There is obviously structured exercise, like going to the gym or going out for a run, and there is non-structured exercise, like walking the extra steps to the, to the shop or taking the stairs instead of the, the lift, etc. or having a manual job that is exercise that is not structured that plays a part in the exercise as well because the exercise will expend calories meaning that that's what you need to do to burn fat to lose weight to expend calories so it does play a big importance in the hierarchy of fat loss and last but definitely I don't say necessarily least but the thing that people pay little attention to is sleep because sleep's gonna regulate your hormones, right? Sleep's gonna regulate your, your whole body, everything to do with it, and, and your brain as well, right? The thing is with sleep, if you're under sleeping and under resting, you're not gonna recover as well from intense workouts. But not only that, you know when you're tired, you consume more sugar, you crave more sugar, because you not just do you want the calories for the energy, you want the sugar for the hit, because your body's low. So the better we can sleep and rest and recover, and again, quality of sleep and how to do that, I've got other videos on that. Sleep is so important when it comes to fat loss because it's gonna help you under consume calories 
in the long run. The better you sleep, the less hungry you're gonna feel. And ultimately, just the better you're gonna feel in yourself. And it'll also help regulate hormones in terms of hunger hormones. It will also help you with your metabolism and everything else that happens when the body is in a proper rest. So this is ultimately the hierarchy of fat loss and what we need to be paying attention to. There's a lot of things up for debate on what's the best strategy and what's the best process, but if you are overweight, pay attention to this and I guarantee things will change. Now let me take you upstairs and demonstrate to you. If you are still confused as to why you're fat, let me show you in a money analogy why this really happens. Let's go. So as you can see on the table here, I have brought a visual representation in terms of money and how you spend your calories on a weekly basis. Now let's say that you are two or three stone overweight and this is your maintenance calories spread over a whole week. Each pound coin representing 500 calories. So let's just say for argument's sake, there's 18,000 calories on the table here, right? Spread over a seven day period. Let's say, because if you'll notice, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, has more calories in it because let's be honest on a weekend you overindulge right whether it be alcohol whether it be takeaways and just general foods and snacks and things you probably consume more calories over the weekend this is most people this is 80 90 percent of people they'll be all right during the week as in they will be okay monday to thursday friday they might start going downhill and as we know we consume majority of our calories probably likely on a weekend so Let's say there's 18,000 calories here, each, each coin representing 500 calories. Now, there's a strategy behind this. If you know that you are, you are not losing weight at all, but you're not gaining weight, then you are in a calorie maintenance. Now, the way that you would look, have to look at it when it comes to losing fat is to first off work out how many calories you're having. So let's just say for argument's sake, you're having this many calories spread in approximately this amount of variation this is just an example so you're pretty good on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday comes saturday comes you're very gluttonous you have six pints uh, two bottles of wine whatever it may be or and then sunday comes your big sunday lunch and a big dessert afterwards and then you're snacking on a night with some crisps and chocolate right so you're spending this many you're not losing weight but you're not gaining weight this is your maintenance phase now several ways that we're going to do it you might think right i want to lose weight so could i take calories from the weekend, have less on a weekend and indulge more during the week. Well, you could, but you're still gonna maintain weight. What you need to do is take calories out. Now, what a lot of people will do is they will then start looking at their week and they'll start taking out things from their week and they will starve themselves during the week, which looks a little bit like this. But what happens then at a weekend is Fuck it, I'll start again on Monday. I'm having a takeaway tonight. Fuck the weekend, I'm off. And then you add, you end up adding those calories back because you've de literally depleted yourself so much that come here, you're starving. No, Ethiopian children are starving, not you. So you usually end up, and sometimes you might even start end up consuming more calories over here when you severely restrict that side. Now, if we go back to the example, let's say we're pretty good during the week and we stick to 2,000 calories every day. We could then look to say, right, could I take any calories out on my weekend, which would be an advantage to do this. So then we would say, right, well, if I take Saturday and Sunday and I just strip it back and I have less calories, if I, not, I don't go out on the drink, then that is a great start, right? So I'm not going out on the drink. Honestly, if you stop drinking alcohol for a bit, you will start to see this is what would usually happen. You would consume less calories and you might move more, I don't know, but you'd probably notice a very positive impact on your weight loss if you stop drinking alcohol. However, I'm not here to tell you not to drink. I'm here to explain in a little bit more detail and a little bit more visual way how you can start to lose weight easier so that you've, you've cut your calories down and you're doing a good job. Do you cut them even further? Well, if you wanna lose a little bit more weight, then you might have to. So maybe you might just decide, you know what, on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm gonna do intermittent fasting. So then I'm taking them out automatically. And as you can see now, we're starting to decrease the overall value of the calories. Now, however, what if you do want to really have a treat on a weekend and really indulge? So yeah, obviously your calories are now gonna, let's reset again. Your calories are gonna creep back up on the weekend because let's say you go, what you're doing now, 
right? You, let's say you don't want to give up what you do on the weekend. Let's say you don't want to give up what you do on the weekend, which is fine, but you're going to have to start to implement a more of a strategy this way. So like I've just mentioned, you could start intermittent fasting. So you only meet, eat two meals a day. You don't eat until 12 o'clock, Monday to Thursday. Now you then could still have the same indulgences on a weekend and possibly lose weight at the same time. But not necessarily, because sometimes, like I say, you will just add these calories back in over here, right? The strategy of intermittent fasting can be very, very beneficial to taking out a certain amount of calories. But what we've got to make sure is we don't then add the calories back in on a weekend. But as we can see, even with our regular so-called diets here, we tend to overconsume usually on a weekend and we don't realize what's knacking us. And we don't want to necessarily under consume on a weekend, but we have to see it as it is. There is some way we need to reduce this count. We cannot keep going the way we're going and expect to lose weight. We must be creating a deficit. Now here's what we'd actually need to take out to effectively lose one pound of body fat. The, the statistic goes, if you want to lose one pound of body fat, just a pound, you need to be in a deficit of 3,500 calories. Now, yes, you can exercise aggressively to get in this deficit, or you could exercise regularly enough, more days of the week than not, and take out enough calories to compensate. But here's what taking out 3,500 calories would look like. It's not actually that much. 500. This is just quite literally, um, maybe, Two chocolate bars, right? Two chocolate bars. This is four bags of crisps. This is five hobnob biscuits. The Starbucks caramel macchiato frothy latte. Frying with butter and just dry frying with a spray. This is not having chips with your takeaway. This is taking away one more caramel macchiato from Starbucks. So I have reduced my calories. This, taking this away, is one pound of fat. As you can see, you still have quite a lot of calories. It hasn't made that much of a dent in your weekly allocation. Now, if, you've, if you try this strategy for a couple of weeks and think you're absolutely starving on the first few days, you can move some of your calories to earlier in the week. There is no harm in moving these calories around a little bit, eating a little bit less on a Sunday, for example, fasting until lunchtime and allowing yourself a little bit more of an even week. See where this is going? But in order for you to lose fat, you have to be willing to consume less calories. You can't be keep adding these on and shifting these around and keeping them in your weekly allocation and expect to lose weight. I hope this has been useful for you. This has been just a little visual analogy of how you can split your calories up, what might be a good approach for you, and just to make you a little bit more aware. The best bit of advice I can give you to start off when it comes to, cal to, to, to losing fat, to losing weight, is don't change anything. First off, see where all of these calories are actually going. Track, just track for a couple of weeks and start tracking on a weekend. So, you get, so some of you will consume eight to 10,000 calories over a weekend and not even realize it. Some of you will consume some people's full week's worth of food in one weekend and not even realize you're doing it because some of you are gluttonous as fuck. And we can be that, especially if we're eating a lot of the wrong foods and we're stressed and we're tired and all the rest. But unless we're aware and we're conscious, we're never gonna get a handle on our eating habits. People talk to me all the time that they've struggled with eating habits for three decades. And I'm like, have you ever tracked your calories over a week period? And like, no. And I'm like, well, how would you expect to get a handle on it unless you know the data? We have to get the data over the drama and consider what's actually going in, what we are putting in our mouth, food and drink wise, so we're aware. We don't even have to go on a diet. In fact, the first approach to losing weight is not stopping eating. It's actually just being aware of what you are eating. So it's actually doing exactly the same thing, but being aware of making a note of it and writing it down. Understand your calories and you'll understand your body. Understand the way that it works and you cannot fail. If this has been amazing, put a comment below, leave a fire emoji, a strong arm emoji, tag your mate who needs to see this, who thinks that buying the next supplement is the way forward. It isn't. Calorie deficit is the way to lose fat. See you on the next one.
If you'd like to learn how to create outstanding levels of energy, motivation, and self-control, my second book, Supercharged, The Modern Day Guide to Doing Exactly That, is out now.